If you followed me for a while, you may have heard me mention the Women's Health Initiative. That was a giant study from the early 2000s that's had a profound impact on the way both doctors and patients view hormone replacement therapy, HRT, for menopause. It's been over 20 years since the WHI was stopped because of a perceived increase in the risk of breast cancer among patients taking hormones. So that's the end of the HRT story, right? Well, not so fast. Several other major hormone studies have been conducted both before and after the WHI. In this video, we're going to take a close look at one of the most important HRT studies and try to figure out what that study does and doesn't say about hormones for menopause. I'm Steve Goldring from SimpleHormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy-to-understand patient education resources. Most of those resources about, are about hormones and hormone optimization. I'm especially interested in menopause and the kind of shameful ways that women have been treated over the past 20 years, really as a direct result of both the Women's Health Initiative and the misinterpretation of the results of that giant study. If you enjoy the videos that I post on this channel, click the like and subscribe buttons. And also you might want to ding that little notify bell to get a notification anytime I post a new video. The Danish Osteoporosis Prevention Study, or DOPS, was a clinical trial in Denmark that started around 1990 and continued until about 2003, more or less. This trial involved over a thousand women between the ages of 45 and 58, both women in natural menopause and some who had had hysterectomies. The women were randomized into two different groups. One group were those taking hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, about 395-400 patients. And the second group was those who chose not to take HRT, around 977 patients. This trial is what's called an open-label trial, and that means that both the patients and the healthcare providers all knew exactly what the patients were taking. The Danish research team specifically decided not to offer a placebo. They thought it would be maybe even unethical to give women a placebo on such a long-term study over 10 to 20 years. Well, you may have heard that a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial is considered the gold standard in clinical research. While an open-label trial without a placebo might sound like a deal-breaker for science, we should maybe think about this a little bit more in depth for a minute. The Danish study was designed to look at a couple of major outcomes. The first is bone breakage, especially of the wrist and the forearm, the spine, the hip, and other bones. And the second was heart disease events like heart attack, heart failure, and death from heart disease. The placebo effect is the idea that a patient taking an inactive, sometimes called a sugar pill, something that has no real medical benefits, that person might actually get some maybe psychological benefits or even side effects from thinking that they're taking a drug when they really aren't. But a placebo is pretty unlikely to have that much of an impact on things like broken wrists and heart attacks or death from a heart disease. I've never heard of anybody dying from a placebo. Would it have been a good idea to include a placebo in this trial? Maybe. But I can certainly understand the reasoning of the Danes in not providing a placebo. The WHI included a placebo, but they had to make sure patients were older and past any menopause symptoms, or those patients would pretty much immediately know they were taking a placebo because it wouldn't work for their symptoms. The fact that there was no placebo pretty much made it impossible to kind of double-blind the Danish osteoporosis prevention trial. That's because you can't really hide the fact that one group is taking hormones while the other group is taking nothing. So we've got our two groups. One's taking hormones, the other isn't. The group that took HRT, and this is an important difference between the Danish study and the Women's Health Initiative, that group was taking one of two uh, hormone combinations. One is a combination of bioidentical estradiol along with a synthetic progestin called norethesterone, and the other is only bioidentical estradiol for women who had had a hysterectomy and no longer had a uterus. Side note, 
the women in the WHI were given conjugated equine estrogens. Those are estrogens made from horse urine, along with medroxyprogesterone. That's a completely different combination than the combination given in the Danish study. So what were the main results from the Danish study? First, the study showed a significant reduction in overall fracture risk for women taking hormone replacement therapy. In layman's terms, the study showed about a 40% risk reduction for broken bones overall, and about a 76% reduction in broken wrists. That's a pretty dramatic result. In this study, the bone density of women taking hormones did go down over time, but not nearly as fast as women uh, who weren't taking hormones. Beyond broken bones, the other hard outcomes Danish researchers were interested in were things like death from a heart attack, admission to a hospital for heart failure, myocardial infarction, or basically heart attacks. When researchers compared the HRT and non-HRT groups, there was again about a 40% reduction in heart risk. This image is called a Kaplan-Meier curve. It shows the non-HRT group in red and the HRT group in green. The curve going down more steeply indicates people either dying or having heart attacks more quickly. That's obviously bad. The curve going down less steeply is good. Heart attacks and death happened a lot less frequently in women on hormones, or HRT. Notice that this Meyer-Kaplan curve extends out about 16 years. That's how long the study followed these patients, which is a, a substantial amount of time. It was a pretty long study, and that's important in heart disease because heart disease takes a long time to develop. So women taking HRT in the Danish study had these two major benefits. They had major reductions in broken bones and osteoporosis risk, and they also had major reduction in heart attacks, death from heart problems, and other signs of heart risk. But the thing to note is that those benefits came without any apparent increase in the risk of three serious issues. Number one is cancer. The rate of breast cancer was about the same or maybe even lower in the HRT-treated group. The second is venous thromboembolism. Those are serious blood clots that some studies have associated with HRT, but patients taking estradiol in the Danish study didn't have more blood clots. And the third is stroke. The WHI seemed to show stroke was slightly increased with HRT, but estradiol in the Danish study didn't cause that. The results of the Danish study are pretty much diametrically opposed to the results of the Women's Health Initiative. And that may have something to do with the fact that women in the Danish study were much younger, about 50 years old on average than the women in the WHI. The WHI women were about 63 on average, and they started hormones about maybe 12 years or so after they went into menopause. And that's a long time to wait. Also, the women in the WHI, as I've mentioned, were given conjugated equine or horse estrogens along with medroxyprogesterone. That combination doesn't seem to have the same safety profile as the hormone combination given in the Danish study. If you'd like to read the Danish osteoporosis prevention study for yourself, I've included a few full text links below this video. Some articles detail the cardiovascular results, and other articles focus on the osteoporosis results. If you're a woman in menopause and you're concerned about your risks for either heart disease or osteoporosis, you may want to talk with a hormone optimization specialist. I happen to know some physicians, nurse practitioners, PAs all over the US, Canada, and the UK. I can't guarantee that I know somebody near you, but if you request a referral through my website, I'll see if I can find somebody who can help you take a close look at HRT, as well as your long-term health risks. Click the link on this video that says find a provider to request a referral. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll look forward to talking with you again real soon.